Welcome again to Problem Solvers University. Once again, my name is Dr. Carlos Moore, and I'm I am the founder of the university. Um, many people have asked me why would I need to create these training videos, um, uh, and I always like to say that uh, I have something to add to society that may better help struggling members find their way through life. I often call myself a life coach, but as you can see, um, uh, if you've been watching the other videos, I talk about subject matters from A to Z. So welcome again, uh, sit back, hope you enjoy yourself. Just a little background about myself. Uh, I retired from the United States Air Force uh, in November 2000, I did uh, 21 years. Uh, my last duty station was Shikoda Air Base, Japan. Um, I enjoyed a lot of my friends over there. So if you're listening, shout out Tez, uh, miss you brother, Bellinger, miss you. Um, a lot of people that um, I can go down the list to thank for my um, wisdom, my grooming. Uh, Big Tree, uh, you was very instrumental in uh, when I take you on the basketball court, but all that said and done, uh, I am a native of Tampa, Florida. Uh, graduated from Tampa Bay Technical High School, and um, when I retired, I moved my family back to the Tampa Bay area for one reason only, and that was to give back to the community that gave me a lot. So, uh, sit back. Hope you enjoy what we're about to talk about. And today's topic is about adultery. <clears throat> adultery. So, so why do people commit adultery? Um, for people who go to church on a regular basis, you may hear about it in the Ten Commandments. So, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, what is adultery? Voluntarily sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. <clears throat> so let's take a look at that definition. Now, the Bible would concur with this definition because in Leviticus uh, chapter 18, 20, God told Moses, do not have sexual, sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. And in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 22, verse 22, we find a similar definition. It says, <clears throat> if a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. Now, in today's time, I don't think we take it that far, but society still frowns on adultery. Matter of fact, in the military, the Air Force, uh, we fall under the, the UCMJ, which is the Bible for military, uh, deals with rules and regulation. It is uh, against uh, the rules. Uh, we call it Article 15. If a person is caught committing adultery, uh, certain things go on with that. You can get booted out, uh, court martial, uh, maybe having some stripes taken away from you. But the, but basically, it is clear from the two biblical definition that adulterers refers to a consensual sexual union. <clears throat> but what is not explicitly clear is whether or not both partners in this illicit sexual union are married. Uh, the biblical man prohibits a man from taking another man's wife, but we do not, or, or should I say the Bible does not indicate whether or not the man is also married. Be that as it may, it is safe to say that if a person who is married married, willingly seeks a sexual encounter with another person, man or woman, whether or not that person is also married, both people are guilty of committing adultery. Adultery. Now I know this is a tough subject for a lot of men I go to the gym. I uh, I used to play a lot of basketball, football, 
<clears throat> and I was looking at, I was looked at as a prude because I would hear stories of people who was committing adultery. And actually it was a bragging tool for a lot of men. <clears throat> I wrote a book called uh, Please Teach Me How to Be a Real Man of God. And in that book, you'll see that I talk about there's a difference between being a man and a male species. You see, we both have genitals, you know, we call a penis, but that doesn't make you a man. See, it's your character that makes you a man. But anyway, I talk about that in some more lessons. Uh, I have a lot of lessons geared toward men, and it's just to make you a better man. I'm not saying I'm all of that. But I, I, I've lived a good life and God hopefully will speak through me to give you some information. Okay? On. Two reasons why God forbids adultery. Okay? There's two reasons. Well, I'm, I'm focused on two main reasons why God uh, forbids adultery. Now, God's reason for instituting his commandment against adultery is twofolded. And the first reason God established the institution of marriage as being between one man and one woman. Let me repeat that again. One man and one woman. Not one man and man and woman and woman. Now, I didn't say this. And if you really believe in the Bible, go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Um, and, and Jesus reiterated this in Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Um, God created marriage to be a building block of his creation and of society. So even after the fall in Genesis 3, marriage is still a sacred union and the foundation for all society. You may say, well, Dr. Moore, why? Because in a marriage, the full expression of the image of God is made also and it teaches, which teaches us that marriage is a vehicle through which God designed the procreation of the human race and the preservation of godly offsprings. So, with a some, uh, what uh, hesitation between a lot of people in today's time, 2017, 18, a lot of people tell me that marriage is something that's gone away with. In fact, you'll find in a lot of church environments, uh, religious environments, there's about a 65, 70% divorce rate. <clears throat> and I believe it has a lot to do with um, our worldly intent. You know, the Bible says we must be in this world, but we're not to drink the Kool-Aid. So I paraphrase that. We're in the world, but we're not made of the world. So, with well, such a, uh, a low premium placed on marriage, it is no wonder uh, why God would seek to protect the union from defilement. And thus, this is why God prohibits the adultery, which is the violation of the sacred marriage union. Now, the second reason for the commandment is found in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. As God as God's chosen people, the Israelites were to reflect God's character in the promised land. So God commanded his people to be holy for he is holy. And part of holy living is sexual purity. So sometimes, you know, we growing up and we say, well, uh, we like boys. Yeah. We like to brag about our conquests. And, you know, we even we hadn't had sex yet, some boys would lie. Because, you know, it's embarrassing to say you was a virgin. If you reached the age of 18 was a virgin, uh, back in those days, you was looked at to be kind of weird, you know. So boys will often lie about their virginity. And But see, the Bible says that, um, you know, sexual purity is if you can abstain from sex. Now, now God did not want his people... Um, emulating the behavior of the Egyptians from whom he delivered them from. Nor did God want his people copying the adultery, which is a sexual sin, right? Um, it was a common place in the lands where the Israelites had been and where they was going to. See, so God set aside the Israelites 
after he released them from captivity from the Egyptians. So God had to give them these laws, these rules. And most people talk about the Ten Commandments. Well, these rules, which the Seventh Commandment is the commandment about adultery. This is just to help you out. It's to protect you, to make you holy, to make you more godly. Um, and so those are the two reasons that God established the institution of marriage. And God says, in this institution, I want you to be holy because I'm holy. Now, the positive and negative parts of God's commandments. So now we have, uh, 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 should I say, now that we know what adultery is and why God instituted the command, we need to learn what God meant by the command itself. As with all of the Ten Commandments, there are things we need to avoid doing. The negative part of the command and things we need to be doing, the positive part of the command. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing to me when I talk to a lot of people and they say, you know, I'm a Christian more. I say, well, what makes you a Christian? Well, I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't do that. If you notice, don't. This is what people often tell me what they don't do. So I respond, what do you do? You see, you're telling me what you don't do, the negative part. But what's the positive part? What makes you a Christian? So the negative part of the command is self-explanatory. Don't commit adultery. However, there's more to this command than a simple avoidance of extramarital relationships. So, one can make the argument that wrapped up this prohibition and all sorts of sexual sin. Uh, some other sexual sin, by the way, is like incest, fornication, homosexuality. Now, I know that's a bad word to bring up in 2018, but homosexuality, I didn't say this. But the Bible says that God did not like it. Matter of fact, God was very upset with the homosexuality that was rampant in those days. So this argument can be made on the basis of chapters uh, in Leviticus. So uh, more specifically, chapter 18 in Leviticus. So also important is avoiding things that would lead or tempt one to consider adultery, such as the unnecessary withholding conju conjugal rights so husband don't withhold sex from your wife wife don't withhold sex from your husband matter of fact you'll find that in in first corinthians paul in first Corinthians chapter 7 paul says that uh he makes this statement because you know sometimes i hear women say to men if he don't act right he won't get none. I said, what do you mean? Well, he knows that he's horny, but if he don't behave, I'm going to freeze him out. And so I often caution uh, women when I do the counseling. I, I caution them not to do that because that could tempt that man to look at that woman at the gym with those yoga pants on. And if he see a heart-shaped figure, he's being tempted. Now, you may say he can control that, but men have needs. Their hormones are flowing through their bodies. And if you're not pleasing your husband in the bedroom, I can guarantee you he's looking somewhere else. Unless God has given him a gift to restrain from sexual activity, even though he's married. So, Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, made further clarification of this command in the book of Matthew chapter 5 uh, by including all kind of lustful thoughts. Now, that's kind of strange. How do we control our thoughts? You know, we all have thoughts. A lot of men growing up probably had some what we call wet dreams. This is when you uh, display semen because you are visualizing yourself. It could be with your spouse, but you are having sex with somebody. Or you're having thoughts of sex with somebody. And that is those lustful thoughts. Even when you're awake and you see pretty women walking around, you feel like uh, it's okay to look. Now, there's a difference between looking and lusting. If, if you find yourself, you look, but you can't turn away. Even if you turn away and you keep looking back and you find yourself staring at that uh, woman, men, men I'm speaking to, if you find yourself staring at that, that's, now you're being tempted. 
God don't tempt you. The devil tempts you. God tests you through trials, but God don't tempt you. God allows you to overcome that temptation from Satan. Okay? So fantasizing about having sexual relationships with someone is the same in God's eye and uh, actually committing adultery in God's eye. So therefore, we must avoid all things that would create within us lustful thoughts. You know, especially in the music industry now, suggested songs, you know, this rap songs is always about women and money, um, movies, pornography, uh, strip joints, make it rain, stuff like that. You know, we, we're bombarded with a lot of uh, what we call health and wealth. You know, make your body look good so you can get more money. You know, I won't call any names out, but there's a lot of people on TV right now making a lot of money. They don't have really a skill set, but they're making money off their bodies and off some porn that they've done in the past. And that's how they became millionaires. So to a young person, they may say, well, I don't need to seek higher academic attainment. I have a nice body, so I can make it just like such and such made it. And I can have an ongoing TV series about body. Um, and I'm gonna just leave it at that because uh, I got some hangups on that. So here's what we should do. We should avoid the immodest clothing. Now, if you look at this woman right here, I forgot her name, but uh, she's a famous singer. Uh, look at her clothing. But she's got a cross on. See, so anything that might cause a brother or sister in the Lord to stumble in this area is it should be avoided. I go to church sometimes and I visit a lot of churches. You know, I have to close my eyes sometimes when I see women walk by me because this is what I see. This picture, I see the bosom sticking out. I actually see some women wear forms of yoga pants to church. And I was wondering one day, I said, I wonder why the clergy don't make them leave. Hmm. Why wouldn't the clergy make someone dress like this leave their premise? Well, there's a couple of reasons. They don't want the scandal. They don't want uh, lawsuits and so forth. But when you get a chance, read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, and also 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Now, the positive part of the command would entail doing the opposite of what the command prohibits. So the positive side is chastity in the body, mind, words, and action. In other words, just think positive. Think as though when you're walking through this life on planet Earth, Jesus himself, your brother, is walking next to you. And if you find yourself fantasizing about a, uh, another person besides your spouse, because we're talking about adultery now, and that only occurs inside of marriage. So, male or female, women, if you find yourself looking at a guy, peck, butt, muscles, act as though Jesus is looking at you with his arm crossed, say, now, wait a minute, what are you doing, Christian woman? You see? So, another positive part about keeping this command is you're, you're keeping watch over what uh, we take in. You know, with our eyes and other senses. So basically, we want to maintain an attitude of temperance and self-control, moderation. You know, let's say we partake in some beverages. There's a little, you know, we call it wine or alcohol. Some brothers I know call it Hennessy, Crown Royal. But what happens? We get a little dizzy, see, and we lose control of ourselves. We may do something or look at something a little differently than we would if we had not engaged in that beverage or that environment, a club scene. You know, it's very dangerous for married men to go to clubs, especially if you got something going on because there's a lot of single women looking for men. And I've met a lot of women say, I don't care if you got a woman, I'll be your side piece. I'll be your three piece church of fried chicken. You see, because a lot of women say, I'd rather have a piece of you than to be by myself. And so if it's a weak man, he may give in to that. So all I'm saying is, for men, be cautious of that, because it's a strong temptation. I'm a man. I see women, 
And my wife always slapped me across my head and say, hey, hey, what you doing? See, so for some weak men, though, they may carry out that look. They may take it a little farther. So just be a little careful, okay? Sexual sins is against yourself. Have you ever thought of it that way? So you say, Dr. Moore, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, the, what you're looking at is a famous pastor. And he, you know, he messed up. We all mess up, you know. But I just want to give you a picture of a man that hopefully a lot of you see. God forgives him. I forgive him. I, I don't know him, but, you know, I got a lot of faults too. A lot of you that's listening has got a lot of faults. But let's not become the judge and the jury. That's, that's going to be Jesus' job to judge us one day and remember however you judge this man you're looking at the same measurement tool is going to be used to judge you so regarding sexual sin the apostle paul said flee from sexual immorality every other sin a person commits is outside of the body but the sexual immoral immorality of person's sins against his own body so when it comes to the sexual sin the best course of action is to re remove yourself from the temptation and avoid the situation altogether so let's just say i'm at a club i shouldn't be at the club anyway but let's just say i'm at a club with my wife and i see these women looking at me they're eyeballing me and um i just kind of look at them i smile see i know what's going to happen next they're going to walk over to me when my wife go to the bathroom or something like that. And they're going to slip me a phone number or they're going to say something, whisper something to me. And they're going to do this all night. You see, so what I should do is say, wife, it's time to go. Or I should tell my wife before I go to the club, I'd rather not go to that club. Let's go to a movie or something like that. Because I'm going to tell you, it's out there and it's rampant. A lot of people don't like to talk about it. A lot of women say, if you love me, you wouldn't even be looking. Well, that's a lie from the death of hell. As long as a man is alive, he's going to look at women if he's heterosexual. But now if he's homosexual, he's going to look at men. But either way it goes, it's going to be adultery, right? So let's just keep ourselves sanitized from those type of environments. Now, Satan encourages adultery to fulfill his purpose what is same purpose right adultery is to complete the corruption of god good creation of marriage he tried to do this by the way in the garden of eden so through the sin of adultery satan tempts us all of us male and female to seek sexual fulfillment in avenues from people other than the one God has ordained. So within the bounds of monogamous heterosexual marriages, Satan tries to sneak in there and throw the third piece in there. Anybody ever go, I like church, church fried chicken, by the way, uh, being the temple of Floridian. I love that church fried chicken. So I ordered me a two piece and I can't wait to get home to eat it. I got the fries and I got to sit in the seat. I got grease everywhere, right? But see, when I get home sometime, I found that they gave me a third piece. I got a three piece now, right? So I'm happy. Well, this is when I talk to guys, they got a nice wife, but if they can get that third piece, that, that, that third piece. Now, a lot of you know what I'm talking about out there. So if I was standing in front of you right now, I could tell by the expression of your face, you like that three piece dinner, see? And, and, and so, uh, matter of fact, I got guys right now tell me they try to talk their wife into having three piece. And so I encourage all my listeners right now to take a step back, take a look at your partner and say, I remember when we first got together, I did some of everything to get you, whether it be male or female. And, and if I could take a step back, I don't care if it was one year, 30 years, 40 years. What was it that attracted me to you and me and you to me? And if you say just because we aging, we gracefully 
aging, which everybody's going to do. One day we're all going to be horizontal. We're all going to be laying in a box of some kind or cremated. But the point is, when, when King Solomon looked back in the book of Ecclesiastes and says, all is vain. See, vanity, vanity means that it didn't mean nothing. See, all that money he had, all the women he had, it didn't mean nothing. And I've come to real, realize that too. <clears throat> I've been up, I've been down. I call myself stable-minded now, not being double-tongued. I, I try to do God's will. So in my marriage, I try to keep it pure. I try to keep myself holy. It's hard. It's hard. It's not hard not to have sex, but it's hard not to fantasize sometimes. Because the devil is always at work. And the way the de devil affects us or tempts us is through thoughts, ideals, and suggestions. So you write down on a piece of paper right now, T, period, I, period, S, period, tis, thoughts, ideals, and suggestions. Satan can't make you do anything, but he's very powerful. And don't play around with Satan because you got to remember, Satan used to guard God's throne. His name used to be Lucifer. And Satan has power. And he has dominion over earth right now. And God could get rid of Satan. But based on what God will is, God says it's not time yet. But I don't want you to ever think Satan can't influence you to do something. So, in closing, I want to thank you for joining me. I like this picture of me because this is I, I act like this all the time. I'm very happy. Um... I don't really get upset about a lot of things. I try not to. But sometimes walking on this earth, people go out their way to make me upset. And like the Hulk says, you don't want to see me get upset now. Okay, so so I say that too. But I want to thank you for being such a patient student. Again, my name is Dr. Carlos Moore. And my, hopefully I fulfilled my objectives for creating this particular video. <clears throat> Please tune in uh, for the more series. And if you have found this video or any other videos to be helpful in your walk with God, then please send me and my organization a generous donation as you are led by the Holy Spirit. So please make all your donation checks or money orders payable to Dr. Carlos and more, P.O. Box 871, Sefner, Florida, 33583. Dash 871. Also, do not forget to visit my bookstore at lulu.com to purchase one of uh, one or more of those books that I've written. I've written about 15 books so far. Now, once again, I depend on your generosity because, as you know, a lot of people have uh, we're getting away from our uh, faith, you know. We're getting away from our religious beliefs now. The world is sort of creeping itself into the church houses. Matter of fact, I, it's hard to distinguish a church service now from some type of concert or rock and roll event. So I'm going to keep it real, though. See, I'm from the South. Uh, I travel around the world, lived in so many different countries. But I'm going to keep it real because God has shown me that he is real. So I want to try my best as a professor to make it real for you. Once again, God bless, and I'll see you next time.